morning and God bless you on today. This is the day the Lord has made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in this day. On behalf of Superintendent Samuel Sago and the entire Victorious Faith Ministries family, we say to our Facebook audience, thank you for joining us in our virtual worship celebration. I believe something is going to be said today that will bless you, that will strengthen you and encourage you on this journey. I want to invite you to engage in the worship, to sing with us, and certainly to open your heart to receive what God has for you through his word on today. Get ready. We're going to have a glorious time in the Lord, and let's just celebrate the God of our salvation. God bless you. Well, it is time for prayer. Bow your heads. Our Father, we thank you today. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for blessing us to see another day, another service, another opportunity to give your name the praise. And because we're here, we're going to bless your name. No, we're not down about the pandemic, for we know that we can bless your name in the midst of a pandemic. Why? Because the psalmist says that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, Father, we bless your name right now. Because your name is holy. Your name is sweet. There is power in your name. Deliverance in your name. Everything we need is in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, have your way. Send a revival in our souls. Send a revival in our town. Oh, God, send a revival with our leaders, God. We know that you're well able to send a revival among us, Father. Hallelujah. And we bind the devil right now. We cast out the spirit of depression and defeat. We cast out the spirit that's causing someone to want to give up. And Father, we ask that you would speak to their soul right now. Let them know that their life is worth living, Father. Lord, let them tune in into this service, oh God, and get a word from you, Father. And Lord, we thank you for doing it, Lord. We thank you for the testimonies that we'll hear from you, oh God, about saving, Father. Lord, we thank you, thank you, thank you. And as we go into this service, God, we ask that you would be pleased with us giving your name the glory. Oh, God, bless the speaker on today. Lord, give him the anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. And God, we claim these promises. And it is in your son Jesus' name. Amen. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life in which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I read to you Galatians chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. Bless God's holy word. Hallelujah. How many of you serve an amazing God? He's truly awesome. And we're going to bless his name and give him praise. Your maze. So glad you're mine. Oh, I'm glad to say you're mine. And we stand in awe, in awe of you, amazed at the things you do. And you're holy, you're holy. worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Yeah. 
Well, what an exciting time we're having this morning as we are worshiping and praising the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But it's time for the word of the Lord. And today our speaker is one who is certainly called of God. She is a native Mississippian, uh, recently united with the Victorious Faith Ministries Church family and has been a blessing to our ministry. Uh, she's a mother, she's a grandmother, and certainly, I believe the hand of God is on her life. And I believe today that God has given her a word to bless his people. Following the ministry of music from Lady Dita Paul, I want you to open up your hearts and your minds to receive this anointed vessel of God on today, Evangelist Jacqueline Givens. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I give God all the praise. I give him all the glory. Hallelujah. And I give him all the honor on today. I bring you greetings from Victoria's Faith Ministries located in Intervena, Mississippi, where my leaders are our Pastor Samuel and Lady Barbara Jackson Sago. Amen. To all our Facebook friends, I just want to say thank you for joining us on this morning. And I hope that something will be said that will encourage and enlighten your heart on today. Hallelujah. We give God the praise and the glory and the honor. Amen. I'm just going to go before the throne of grace this morning. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your goodness. God, I thank you for your mercy on today. God, I thank you for your loving kindness. God, thank you just for being so good and being so gracious to us. And Father, I give you all the praise. Father, I give you all the glory on this morning. Now, Father, I pray that God, that you would use me, God, for your glory. And I forever give your name the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And hallelujah. Truly, I thank God this morning. Thank God for his word. Thank God for just being my healer and my deliverer on today. Just want to encourage your hearts on this morning. If I was to use a subject, my subject today would be don't allow the devices of the enemy to stop you from reaching your destiny. Just want to let you know that God has a destiny and a plan for each and every one of us. And God wants us to succeed. He desires that we prosper. And so we thank God, amen, for just being the good God that he is. And I just want to use that my objective today. My objective is to convince you, the believer, that God has a purpose and a destiny for your life. Amen. Truly, I thank God for his word. Thank God for just being good on today. Amen. As I was studying the word of God in the book of Genesis, the 15th chapter, the 13th verse, and it says, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Turn with me to Exodus, the third chapter, and the 14th verse, and it says, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Amen. And truly, we thank God for his word. And in his word, he is letting us know that despite, in spite of what's going on, that God is a deliverer. Well, when I begin to look in Exodus, the first chapter, and begin to look at the children of Israel, and begin to look at the story, you'll find that the people of God, the Bible said that they were being fruitful and that they were multiplying. And it also said they waxed exceedingly. In other words, that they were growing and that they were flourishing. And so what you see is that's what God wants his people to do. He wants us to grow, he wants us to flourish, and he wants us to multiply. But then when you look in the Exodus, the first chapter, you'll also find that the Egyptians had another plan for the people of God. They did not like that the people of God was growing and was increasing. Can I tell you on today that you have an enemy that don't desire to see you grow, that don't decide, that desire to see you increase, he wants to do whatever he can to stop you. And so when I look at this in the first chapter, 
Uh, they said the Egyptian came up with a plot. Uh, can I encourage you to let you know that even though the enemy has a plot, God has a plan. Uh, and in this plot, the Bible says uh, the Egyptians, what they were beginning to do, they said that they were going to afflict the people of God. They were going to make life hard for them. When you think about affliction, affliction is pain and suffering and distress. Can I let you know that sometimes, but you'll find out even now, that the enemy wants to send pain and suffering. He wants to cause you to have distress because he does not want you to grow. He does not want you to flourish. But can I encourage that even in the word of God, and all about that the, uh, the Egyptians tried to afflict them, they said that more that they afflict them, the more that they grew. Can I help you out? That even when the enemy has a plan to try to discourage you and try to afflict you and try to discourage you, that even when he's trying to do this, if you keep your focus on God, that you can still grow and you can still flourish in spite of affliction. Well, when they found out that that didn't work, they tried another scheme. Can I help you out? That when the enemy don't succeed the first time, he'll try again. And so what they decided, they're going to put in a harsher bondage. They were going to put the people in a more and strict and deeper. They were going to try to make it worse, even worse for them. Can I let you know that even though in spite of what the enemy is trying to do, because he'll try when he don't succeed the first time, he'll try again. And he'll try to send those things that will try to discourage you, that will try to keep you from not walking according to the plan and the will of God. And so when the Egyptian did that, it still did not stop them. So then they, the Egyptian tried a third plan. Now this is a very unique attempt. The Bible said, it said Let's, the Egyptian said, let us kill the male child. Well, here's the thing. The male child carried the seed. If there's no seed, there's no pregnancy. If there's no pregnancy, there's no birthing. If there's no birthing, there's no growth. And so what the enemy wants to do, he wants not only to afflict you, not only to put you in bondage, but he don't even want you to grow and fulfill those things that God has put down on the inside. Let me let you know the enemy tries to come and snatch the very seed that God has planted down on the inside. He wants to take your dreams. He wants to take your purpose. He wants to take your destiny. But I come to encourage you on today, no matter what the enemy is trying to do, God still has a plan for your life. You ought to thank God right there because God is still going to work things out for you. And so when I begin to look in the word of God, you will find that over in the book of Exodus, in the third chapter, here God is about to execute his plan. Not that he's going to start the plan because the, we already had the plan in place. In uh, Genesis the 15, ch 15 chapter, he talks about the plan. So over in Exodus, he's getting ready to execute the plan. Let me encourage you on today. God is getting ready to execute some things in your life. He's getting ready to execute and bring you up out of the things that you are in because you can't get your, to your promise until you get out of your Egypt. Let me encourage you on today. So the Bible says uh, that God began to have a conversation with Moses. Uh, Moses was considered a deliverer. And he began to tell Moses, he said, I've seen uh, the people's pain. I've heard their cries. Uh, let me let you know on today that God hears and he sees your pain. He hears and he sees your cry. Don't give in. Don't throw in the towel because God is getting ready to execute some things on your behalf. Let me let you know that regardless to whatever the enemy may have tried to afflict you with, God is able to bring you out. And we know that the enemy will try all type of devices. He'll try all he can to get us off course, to get us so we're not focused, to get us to the point where we're in bondage. He'll throw all type of abuse against us, physical abuse, mental abuse, spiritual abuse, he'll emotional abuse. He'll throw all of these different things at us to get us off track. But can I encourage you on this morning that God is able to put you back in the right place. He also, he'll use all type of bondage to keep the people of God from not fulfilling and not growing. When you are in bondage, you can fulfill and reach the plan and the destiny that God has for your life. And when I begin to look at bondage, there are a whole lot of things 
uh, that can keep us in bondage. Uh, can I talk about just for a few? Uh, a few of them. You'll find that unforgiveness uh, is one of the worst bondage uh, that people can be in. It keeps you locked. Uh, it keeps you in a place uh, where you can't move. Uh, it keeps you harboring bitterness and resentment. And the enemy knows uh, as long as you are walking around well in unforgiveness, uh, you can't fulfill a purpose. Uh, let me encourage you uh, that you need to get in a place uh, where you allow that unforgiveness uh, to be healed. Uh, I'm not saying that the things that you've gone through don't want that you may have something uh, against that person or uh, something that, that it hurt real bad, uh, but let me let you know that if you hold on to it, uh, if you keep that thing locked in your heart, uh, you'll walk around and be miserable all of your days. Uh, you won't be able to enjoy life. Uh, you won't be able to see the blessed things uh, that God has for you when you walk in unforgiveness. And so what we want to do is allow God to heal us in those hurt places. Allow God to heal us in those wounded places. And that God, when he begins to heal, then we can begin to grow. The another thing that will keep us in bondage is ungodly soul ties. Getting hooked up and connected with the wrong person. And I don't know if you guys been looking at what's been going on lately. Will and Jada had a round table discussion and Jada used the word entanglement. We got a lot of people that's been caught up in entanglement. We got entangled with the wrong person and when we got entangled, we became bonded and bonded with that person. But can I encourage you all today that even in the midst of entanglement, God is able to deliver you and bring you up out of that entanglement. And another thing that keeps us all mind up and keep us all and tangled up, not knowing who we are, walking around with the spirit of rejection that'll keep us locked up, keep us from seeing who God has created us to be, and it'll keep us from not knowing who God has shaped and molded us to be. So can I encourage you today, regardless to whatever your affliction, or whatever your bondage may be, that God is able to deliver you and set you free. Let me let you know that God has a plan and a purpose and a destiny for your life. The first thing I want you to look at is that when we're on our way to our freedom, on our way to our canon, trying to get to the promised land, the first thing that we need to learn to do and get in our lives, the first thing is to learn how to pray. In other words, in order for you to get up out of the things that you're in, you're going to have to get a connection with the Father. You're going to have to get in tune with the Lord because only Jesus is able to deliver you and bring you up out of the things that you've got yourself entangled in or the things that have been placed upon you. He is the only one that can deliver and cause you to be free. And so the first thing you want to establish is getting a prayer life with God. There's nothing more important than having a prayer life, a communication with God. And you, you'll find out in the word that God said, When you begin to cry out and begin to talk to your daddy God, the God that you serve will bring a deliverer unto you. And what we want, God, guys, we want to walk in that freedom. We want to walk in the liberty that God has promised us. Promised us. And so then I look also in the word of God that says, whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, the Bible says, believe you receive them and you shall have them. And first John
Bless you, beloved of God. What a wonderful word from the Lord on today. We certainly do appreciate Evangelist giving as she has talked about 
and not allowing the enemy to hinder you from your purpose. Praise God. Amen. God has purpose for you, and there are great things on the horizon for you to come. Praise God. We offer you the opportunity, amen, to seek after those things so that God can truly bless you in your life. Amen. Perhaps uh, after hearing the word of the Lord, then uh, God has touched your heart. And my friend, perhaps you uh, have not given your life to the Lord. We certainly do not want to end this presentation without giving you that opportunity to receive Jesus into your heart and into your life. And really, quite contrary to popular opinion, it's not hard, amen, to receive Jesus in your life. The Bible tells us that if we just believe in our heart and then confess with our mouth, we shall be saved. And my friend, it's just as simple as that. Just accept Jesus Christ. Just believe that he's the son of God. Believe, amen, that he lived and died for your sins. Believe that one day he's coming back again for a church without a spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And my friend, you can be saved. You can be saved if you're just asking to forgive you for your sin. The Bible says, that he is faithful and just to forgive you if you're just confessing. Hallelujah. And we bless God for even doing that even on today. Look, if you want to receive Jesus even now, if you just pray this simple prayer with me, I know that God will redeem you from your sins and give you new life in Christ Jesus. Just pray with me. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I've done wrong. I've made bad choices. But Father, after hearing your word today, I believe you are my Savior. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for my sins. I invite Jesus into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. And by grace, through faith right now, I believe my sins are forgiven and I am saved. My friend, it's just as simple as that. If you prayed that simple prayer with us, then right now your life is here with God in Christ Jesus. My God, my God. And look, amen, all that you need to do now is just continue in the things of God. Grow in grace and find yourself Amen. Prospering in the things of God. Find yourself a good church to get into, all right? Amen. And uh, if you uh, don't know of one, praise God, then be sure to contact us at 901-450-9739. Give us a call, praise God. Amen. Make contact with us, and certainly we can offer you more information about your walk with Christ Amen. And help you to grow in the things of God. We certainly do appreciate you. Amen. Praise God. You might have a testimony or there might be a prayer request. You can call that same number. Praise God. You might already be saved and already forgiven for your sin. Already on the road to purpose. Praise God. Amen. Give us a call. Amen. And certainly we'll be glad to pray with you. 901 450 Three, nine. Praise God. God bless you and God strengthen you real, real good. My friend, amen, I know that you don't want to uh, receive from the Lord as you have on today, praise God, and not uh, sow a seed into this ministry. Amen. And we want to give you that opportunity even right now, right? Praise God. Amen. And you can find us, amen, on your uh, digital devices, praise God, if you just go to Give the Five. And you'll find Victorious Faith Ministries there, amen. And uh, you can make your contribution to the ministry right there, praise God, amen. We'll receive that, and uh, certainly we know that God will bless you in your giving, praise God. Perhaps, amen, you're not in the position to uh, give online, praise God. I want you to know that you can, you can, amen, uh, write us a check, amen, and uh, drop it in the mail. Amen. You can make it payable to Victorious Faith Ministries and address it to P.O. Box 313, Itabina, Mississippi, 38941. Once again, make it payable to Victorious Faith Ministries, Church of God in Christ, and address it to P.O. Box 313, 
uh, Itabina, Mississippi, 38941. I'm certain we'll receive it there, and I know that God will bless you real, real good. Now, if you happen to be in the area within driving distance of the church, praise God, we're located at 36540 Highway 82 West, and uh, we'll be will have them and rather the security team as well as the finance team there on uh, the grounds to receive your gift and man if you're not able to give digitally and uh, you don't want to drop a mail but if you are in the uh, area and within driving distance then drop by will be uh, there on location from 10 30 until 12 noon to receive your gift praise god god bless you god strengthen you and the lord keep you is our prayer we certainly do appreciate you amen tuning in and being a part of this virtual celebration on today I want to remind you amen that on uh, tuesday evenings at 6 30 we're in our bible study our tuesday night teaching and we invite you to be a part of that amen and our sunday school sessions are on saturday evenings praise god uh and that begins at five o'clock p.m amen you can find more information about our services on uh our facebook page amen there at uh, victorious faith ministries you can find us there and we certainly look forward amen to you being a part of what god is doing in this season praise god god bless you and god strengthen you you pray for us and we are praying for you. Amen. I know that without a shadow of a doubt, God has great things in store for you. You be blessed, be encouraged, and we'll see you the next time right here with Virtual Worship and the Victorious Faith Ministries Church of God in Christ. God bless you. I am Evangelist Barbara Jackson Sago, founder and president of You Are My Sister. You Are My Sister, affectionately known as YAMS, is a God-ordained and God-inspired network of sisters who have been united by real life issues. YAMS is a platform where women can walk in transparency by sharing their stories of pain and promise. Their stories of rejection and acceptance, and yes, their stories of failures and successes. We aspire to become a global network of godly women, providing a nurturing community for restoration, healing, encouragement, development, and guidance through mentoring programs, counseling sessions, and yes, even organized conferences. So that being said, I want to invite you to the YAMS Virtual Women's Summit on Friday and Saturday, August 7th and 8th, 2020. It's going to be a powerful time of worship, fellowship, and impartation. Our theme is breaking out of the box of mediocrity. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says, Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. And ladies, this is the time to get rid of the mundane, to get rid of the stale, the stoic, the ritualistic routines that have no real spiritual benefit. And it's time to allow God to do and work a new thing in your life. Now on Friday night, August 7th, we will kick off the summit with a powerful inspirational service at 7 p.m. This service will air Facebook Live. We're going to have great music by Pastor Josh Bracey and Power Anointed. Psalmist Sharon Jackson of Marietta, Georgia will lead us forth in a time of worship and praise. Our keynote speaker on that night will be Evangelist Barbara Bryan of Los Angeles, California. You know she is a noted published author, a sought out conference speaker, and certainly a phenomenal woman of God. It's going to be epic. And then on Saturday morning, we will resume. Saturday morning, August 8th at 8.30 a.m. We're going to engage in a season of prayer and worship. 
prior to moving into our sessions. The Saturday session, uh, let me add, will be a closed session and opened only to those persons who have registered. It will be presented on a Zoom platform. We'll have small groups, breakout sessions, as well as general sessions. Some of our presenters on Saturday will be uh, that phenomenal supervisor, Vivian Wesson of the Tennessee Southwest Jurisdiction, Lady Paulette Hickman of the Abundant Harvest Church of God in Christ, co-pastor B. Henley of the Journey Christian Church, and Lady Valerie Riley of the Lily of the Valley Church of God in Christ. We will also engage in a time of health and wellness uh, with my own niece, Adrian Campbell, who will be instructing on the importance of getting and staying fit for the kingdom. We hope to have special music on that day by Sister Bridget Harris of New Orleans, Louisiana. And it's just going to be phenomenal. Ladies, I am so looking forward to spending and sharing this time with you during this awesome experience. Now, let me say that most sessions of this sort may start at about $150 registration or more, but registration is only $50. Yes, you heard me right. It's only $50. And I'm asking you to visit our website, yamsnetwork.com. Y-A-M-S-N-E-T-W-O-R-K, yamsnetwork.com. If you are interested in being a part of this summit, you can go to that website and register securely. Only a $50 registration. Now on that day, ladies, we hope to sport our t-shirts. And if you'd like to order a t-shirt, you can also do that online. Order your Yams t-shirt. And of course, for your convenience, those t-shirts will be mailed directly to your home. Now, some of you say, Sister Barbara, I can't attend during that time, but I love what you're doing. And I just want to contribute and donate uh, to your efforts. If you would like to donate to our ministry, you can give through the website as well, or you can give via Cash App. The Cash App title is dollar sign my yams. That's M Y Y A M S dollar sign my yams. However, whatever gift you sow, it will be greatly appreciated. We are just excited to be able to make a difference in the lives of these great sisters for the glory of God. Look, I love you. God bless you. I want to see you at this YAMS Virtual Women's Summit. Your deadline for registration is August 1st, 2020. So I say to you, don't delay. Register today. And I hope to see your face in the place. God bless.